Hello, I'm Kath Wilkinson. I'm a consultant paediatric anaesthetist and I lead for safeguarding children for the Royal College of Anaesthetists. In the past, we've run successful level three training days for anaesthetists that included a workshop on preparing for an interview with a parent and child about a safeguarding issue. Feedback has shown that this was viewed as one of the most useful aspects of this training. This short film has been prepared to assist anaesthetists in dealing with this potentially difficult task. We hope that it will be useful for anaesthetists of all grades who need to maintain level two competencies, as well as leads at level three, who may wish to recommend it as an educational resource. Having a conversation with a parent and child or a young person about the possibility of abuse is something that all doctors should be prepared to handle but it can be difficult to know how to approach it. We're going to cover how to prepare for such an interview and then how to conduct it in this film. We will simulate a couple of typical responses all based on a scenario that would require an anaesthetist to take their concerns forward. It's important to recognise at the outset that the reactions of the parent and child in this recording have been compartmentalised for the benefit of explaining how they might best be managed they are unlikely to occur in the same order and may not be demonstrated at all in reality. We'll also suggest how best to communicate your findings and what the immediate next stages of the process might entail. I've been anaesthetising an 11-year-old girl called Rebecca for a closed reduction of a forearm fracture that she sustained yesterday while playing on a climbing frame in her local park. Rebecca was seen yesterday evening in the emergency department where a back slab was applied and the family were told to come back in the morning starved ready for surgery. I saw Rebecca pre-op with her mum Sarah. I was told that she had mild cerebral palsy. However she is otherwise well and attends a mainstream school but her mum says she is a bit of a clumsy child. Her mum wanted to know if Rebecca would be able to go home soon after the procedure as she had two other children and was meant to be working a night shift later that day. In the anaesthetic room we noticed that Rebecca had a red mark on her calf. Her mum said that this was a healing burn which had been sustained when Rebecca tripped over a hot domestic iron. She said that this happened because it had been on the floor cooling down when her partner, Neil, had been ironing a shirt a couple of weeks ago. The practice nurse had seen Rebecca at the GP surgery and had dressed the burn that was now healing well. Once anaesthetised, I noticed a large bruise over Rebecca's ear which ran into her hairline. I discussed it with the surgeon at the time, but he was not overly concerned. I wasn't very comfortable with this and discussed it with the consultant paediatrician while the child was in theatre. I organised to see the mother with Rebecca and the paediatrician straight away after the list. Unfortunately, the paediatrician wasn't able to attend as she was caught up dealing with an urgent case in A&E. I decided I had better get on with having a chat with Rebecca and her mother as they were now keen to go home. The anaesthetist has correctly identified safeguarding concerns. Rebecca has a fractured forearm, a healing burn on her calf and a bruise on her ear. These are three significant injuries and a clear explanation is required. Two of these injuries in particular are suspicious of non-accidental injury. Bruising on the ears and the burn in the shape of an iron on the soft tissue of the calf. NICE guidelines identify these as alerting features of child maltreatment when further action must be taken by the health professional to safeguard the child. The anaesthetist needs to speak to Rebecca and her mother Sarah before she goes home. The purpose of the interview is to listen and observe, seek an explanation for any injury from both the parent or carer and the child in an open and non-judgmental manner. Record in the child's clinical record exactly what is observed and heard from whom and when. Decide if child maltreatment needs to be considered or suspected and take the appropriate action. 
this will be a difficult interview and there needs to be careful preparation. Consider the where, when, who and how. Obtain as much information as possible. Read the clinical notes and get an idea of who is in the family. For example, is this mum or step or foster mum? Who else is living at the same address? Does the child or young person have other medical problems? Are there any letters that are relevant to look at? The interview needs to take place before the family leave. If the family did leave knowing that you wanted to speak to them, this would increase your concerns and further action would have to be taken. In relation to where, privacy is essential. It is important to speak to the family with a colleague present. This provides support for the family and, as importantly, yourself. Ideally, you would be accompanied by a paediatrician, but as a minimum, a trained member of nursing staff. You need to consider whether to speak to the parent first, the parent and child together, or the child on their own with appropriate consent. Your role is not to formally interview the family, but to clarify your concerns and reach a decision on whether you consider or suspect child maltreatment. This would lead to an investigation by professionals with specialist expertise in the assessment of children, including interviewing them. The admitting surgeon involved should be aware of your concerns and that you think an interview is needed. Many health trusts and boards have a safeguarding team who provide invaluable advice and may be able to attend the interview. Let's go through a checklist of what to remember. What are you trying to find out and how best to achieve this? You're aiming to clarify your concerns and reach a decision on whether you consider or suspect child maltreatment. What are you trying to communicate to the child and family? The family need to know what you're worried about. You must make them aware of your concerns and that you're looking for an explanation. If your concerns are confirmed, you must also tell them that you will have to share your concerns with other professionals. What sort of approach works best? An open and non-judgmental manner. Be honest about your concerns and that your focus is on Rebecca's well-being. General advice is to pose simple questions and listen carefully to their responses. Throughout, watch the non-verbal communication of the child and mother and their interaction. Allow pauses in the conversation. An example would be to the parent, talk me through how Rebecca got the bruise on her ear. And to the child, Rebecca, what happened to your ear? Remember to try to keep building a relationship with the mother and child. Use supportive statements such as, I can see this is difficult for you. Consider how to best record what you heard and what was said. Ideally record verbatim, but in practice this is difficult. It is particularly important to record what the child says. Your colleague can help with this and needs to remember to have pen and paper too. Hi Rebecca. Hi Sarah. Hi. I'm Dr Brennan, the anaesthetist. Remember I looked after Rebecca this morning for her operation? Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to come and have a chat with you now after the operation and, and, uh, and first of all just ask you how you're feeling now? Good. You're okay? Now, aren't you? Good, good, I'm pleased about that. And, and is your arm comfortable? Not too yeah. painful? Good. And have you had something to eat and drink? Yeah. Lovely, mm. okay. So I just wanted to have a chat with you about a few things that yeah. uh, I noticed during the operation. There's nothing wrong, the anaesthetic and the operation went very well. Okay. But I noticed when I anaesthetised uh, Rebecca that she had a bruise. Uh, on her left ear, quite a nasty bruise. I, I don't know if you were aware of that. You can see. Oh, that's nasty. At this early stage of the interview, it is important not to sound as though you're accusing the parent of anything, as this will only anger them. How did you do that with Tom? Yeah, doesn't surprise me. Her and her brother, they are always play fighting, so probably her and Tom, and you got a bit of a knock on your ear, did you? Was, was, it, was that right? Was it just playing, Rebecca? Mm, nothing to worry about. You'll live, won't you? <laughs> OK, OK. And if you remember when you came for the anaesthetic and Rebecca, yeah. and uh, sorry, Natalie was with me, yeah. my assistant, um, you remember that um, there was a, a red mark on, on, the, on uh, Rebecca's... Oh, on her leg. Uh, 
leg, yes. yeah. Just remind me what that was due to. What caused oh, that? Oh, the arm was on the floor, cooling down, and um, she tripped. She does tend to forget, but clumsy sometimes. So. Okay. Yeah. So, so she just tripped. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right then. So. And we went and got it dressed and everything. It's absolutely fine. You, you went so to really, the doctor. Honestly, yeah. you don't need to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Clearly describing the marks you've noticed leaves the parent and child with little option but to discuss the situation. Use open questions and allow enough time for a response. Okay. Yeah. So, Rebecca, can I just ask you again, because we weren't quite sure about that, about your ear. W was that how it was? Were you just playing when um, you, you, you fell over and, and hurt your ear? I was that right? Is that how it was? Was it Rebecca? Me and Tom were playing, yeah. and Neil was watching the football. Mm. We was making a bit of noise, and Neil hit me with the remote control. What do you mean he hit you with the remote control? He, we was making noise, and he was watching football, and he got the remote control and hit me. What, like on per, like angrily hit you? Yeah. I didn't know about that. Okay. I can't believe it. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to make you angry. Oh, sweetheart. <sighs> what about the burn? I can't remember. Rebecca has disclosed to the doctor and nurse in front of her mother. It is important to document what Rebecca has said as accurately as possible. It is not your role to interrogate Rebecca, but establish the facts. So maybe the doctor will slow things a little to clarify the facts and reiterate them at this stage. Just to be clear then, the, the bruise on your, on your ear, that was because Neil, uh, who is Neil by the way? He's my boyfriend, he's, he's boyfriend. living with us at the moment, just temporarily. Okay. So Neil hit you with the remote control when he was angry because you were making a noise when he was watching football. Is that right, Rebecca? Okay. Well, look, nobody's angry with you, so don't worry, no. okay? This version of events, without adding any of your own interpretation, is what you will write up in the notes. So getting the story clear as it is presented to you at this stage is very important as it sometimes changes subsequently. I don't know what, to do. what are we going to do now? Okay. Well, I think, I think you'll, you, you'll agree with me this is, this is serious and, and um, I need to go and speak to some of my colleagues who, who know better how to deal with these difficult, these difficult situations. So what I want to do now is um, I want to go and speak to one of my co colleagues who is a, a, a paediatrician, one of the children's doctors, and I'll get her to come along and we'll have, a, we'll have another chat. Uh, I'll also need to speak to some other colleagues who might be able to help us sort this out. Um, some of my colleagues who work in social services might be able to help us with that. You do not need to outline this in great detail, but mentioning the involvement of other agencies, such as police and social care, is important, particularly as mother is accepting the situation and would want to know the next steps. However, if she was angry or upset, this might antagonise her and decrease her cooperation. She could influence Rebecca to change her story. It's always good practice to inform families what will happen, but you don't need to do this if it would make the situation worse. But in the meantime, I would like you both to stay with us here. Um, we'll make sure you get a, we'll get your cup of tea and we'll get something for Rebecca um, while we get this all sorted out. I, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And don't worry, Rebecca, you've done nothing wrong. In this scenario, Rebecca has told her mother and the doctor that her mother's partner hurt her, causing the ear bruise Rebecca felt able to disclose as a result of being listened to and the development of trust during the interview. Mother was supportive and non-judgmental, although upset. In practice, it is rare for a child to disclose in this situation, but if we ask the right questions in a sensitive manner and listen to the child, it is possible. The anaesthetist now needs to make a child protection referral to social services by telephone who will take immediate action to ensure Rebecca is safe, working with the police on a joint investigation. You must document the interview and put the referral in writing at the same time. Rebecca requires a full paediatric assessment 
with consideration of further investigations. Hi Rebecca, hi Sarah. Hi. I'm Dr Brennan. Do you remember me? I gave you the anaesthetic this morning for your operation. And this is Natalie, who's one of my colleagues who's been working with me today. Yeah. I just wanted to come and have a chat with you and see how you were after the operation. How are you feeling now? Good. Good. Are you comfortable? Your arm not too sore? No. Okay. I'm ready that, to go home now, That's aren't good. I? That's good. And you've had something to eat and drink? Yeah, she has. Good. I'm pleased. Okay. So... I'm, I'm glad we've had a chance to have a talk. I just wanted to keep you for a few moments and have a talk with you about some things I noticed during the operation. Um, really? Yeah, nothing to worry about. The operation and the anaesthetic all went fine. Right. But I noticed when Rebecca was asleep that she had a bruise um, on her left ear, quite a nasty bruise. I don't know if, if you've noticed it. I don't know if you no. want, wanted to have a look yourself now, perhaps. At this early stage of the interview, oh, yeah. it is important not to sound as though you're accusing the parent of anything as this will only anger them. Nasty, isn't it? Was that with Tom? <laughs> Got an older brother, 12-year-old Tom. They're always play fighting. Okay. To be honest, both of them give as good as they get, don't... You're as bad, aren't you? Is, is that right, Rebecca? Is that, is that how you got the bruise? Or you I'm just sure playing? it is. Always getting bruises. But as I said, it's not just her. OK. And you remember when you came to the anaesthetic room before Rebecca went to sleep? Yeah. We talked about that red mark on her leg. Yeah, I told you Can, about that. Yeah, can you just remind me again how that occurred? There was an iron on the floor, it was cooling down, she tripped and fell on it. Honestly, it was dealt with, I went to the GP and the nurse dressed it, it's all healing fine, it's nothing to worry about. Right, Clearly describing the marks you've noticed leaves the parent and child with little option but to discuss the situation. Use open questions and allow enough time for a response. Rebecca, you didn't seem entirely sure about, about that bruise on your ear. Can you just tell me yourself about how that happened? Was it playing or was, was it something else? I just told you what happened. Why are you asking her? I've just told you what happened. OK, well, I'm no expert on these issues and I, I'm just concerned that there's, there's a, a, a bruise or a, yeah. a mark at least on Rebecca's ear. And Children I don't get bruises all the well, time. What are you saying? Having one on the ear is quite an unusual place to have one, to be honest. Not really. If children are playing well, and fighting... Well, I, I just wanted to try and... Sort out in my own I'm sorry, mind. I'm not uh, quite clear here. Are you actually accusing me of abusing my child? I'm not. Is that what you're doing? Nobody is accusing you of anything. Well, what are you saying? It will be important for the doctor and nurse to remain calm at this point and to continue to try and engage the mother in conversation. I'm asking these questions out of concern for your daughter and I'm not sure... And you think how. I'm not concerned about my daughter? Of course you are, of course Well you then, are. I took her to the GP are. about the iron and I would take her to the GP about the bruise, if that will make you feel better. Okay. But for now, we're going, I've got two other children being looked after by a neighbour and I need to get home. No, I understand, the, I understand that this is uncomfortable for you, but... It's not about uncomfortable, I've got two children no, that are being no. looked after by a neighbour and you're cross-questioning my child. I understand that, but I'm trying to do what's right for your daughter and um, I'm just <laughs> like trying to I'm find not. out why or how that th those bruises occurred. I've just told you and I will get the bruise sorted. Rebecca, come on, we're going. Okay, okay. Come on. It, I come just on. need to say that if you leave now, you are leaving against come my advice. On. Although the mother has given reasons for leaving, she has not cooperated with the doctor and left against their advice. There are many reasons for this behaviour. Distress, shock, guilt, anxiety, anger. She may have experienced an abusive relationship herself or have mental health or learning issues. She may not understand the concerns and the importance of what is being said. Alternatively, she may understand the concerns and is scared about the implications, particularly on her relationship with Neil. She may know this has been happening for some time. If this behaviour raises your concerns significantly, your priority is the welfare of the child. Is she safe to go home? Could it wait till tomorrow? You should discuss what has happened with the consultant paediatrician or safeguarding lead immediately, who will give you further advice on what to do. You have a responsibility to make a child protection referral to social services, who will liaise with the police on the next steps. These situations can be upsetting for the professional, and advice and support can be obtained from the safeguarding team. This scenario was based on events around an actual case and you'll want to know the outcome. 
It was the mum's partner who was responsible for Rebecca's burn and bruised ear, and he eventually admitted this to the police. He was formally charged and placed on bail. There was ongoing supervision of Rebecca and social services continued to make an assessment of the family's needs. It's important that you're told the outcome of these situations in real life too, so that you are satisfied your concerns have been dealt with. The need to check that action has been taken is a GMC requirement of all doctors, so you do need to follow up these cases if you aren't kept informed. The outcome may or may not be flagged up in subsequent medical records in the future. This is an uncommon and uncomfortable scenario, but protecting children from harm is everyone's business. Whatever we're doing, the child's safety is paramount. We hope that you found this short film helpful and that it gives you more confidence in dealing with these kind of cases. You might also find some other resources useful. For example, the safeguarding pages of the RCOA, APA GBI and RCPCH websites. And specific guidance from the GMC is definitely worth being familiar with. The NSPCC website provides an excellent overview of the statutory processes in the different parts of the UK. My sincere thanks to Dr Liam Brennan and Dr Alison Mott and to Miss Natalie Bell for agreeing to take part in this short film. Thanks also to the Royal College of Anaesthetists and the Association of Paediatric Anaesthetists for supporting the project and to colleagues in paediatrics who contributed their time, energy and expertise. Finally, thanks for watching.